Sunday, everyone. It's nice to see all of you here. We'd like to really uh, welcome everyone to our worship service. It's always awesome to worship our amazing God. It's always wonderful to do what we were created for. And uh, yeah, we'd like to welcome you. Thank you for those people who joined us on site. It's really nice to see all of your faces or your eyes, I guess, because your lips are covered. And uh, for those joining us online, we thank God for technology. And we would like to invite you to join us on site, especially now. Starting next week, we will be increasing the number of seats because the government already allowed us up to 30% capacity. So just go ahead and register at register.victory.org.ph so that you could join us on site. If it's your first time here, Welcome, we hope that you find a family here, and if you've been worshiping with us for the longest time, we hope that you continue to grow in this community. Again, happy Sunday, my name is Bodhi, I'm one of the pastors here in Victory, and uh, today I'm preaching in the place of Pastor Ariel, uh, he's going on rest right now, it's been a busy week, so hi Pastor Ariel, uh, looking forward to your preaching next week, but I'm thankful for the privilege to preach the Word of God today. Today is actually a special Sunday. Aside from it being a communion Sunday, it is also what we call the Pentecost Sunday. We remember that time when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples and the apostles uh, back, back in the New Testament. It happened after the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. The Spirit was poured out and that triggered the beginning of the church's mission to go out, to go out and preach about Jesus to the ends of the earth. That is why today, we are going to talk about the Holy Spirit to commemorate that. The Holy Spirit whom a lot of people usually call the forgotten God. Why is He called the forgotten God? Because if we're being honest, not a lot of us really mind Him, do we? Sabi natin kawawa naman siya. Actually, no, tayo yung kawawa. Kasi the Holy Spirit doesn't need us. We are the ones who need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. I just want to know, for those of you who are online, I want to find out, what do you know about the Holy Spirit? Who do be, you believe the Holy Spirit is? Kindly share it in the chat box. We would love to hear from you. For the people here, just think about it in your mind. Who is the Holy Spirit for you? Personally, I grew up uh, in kids' church, I knew about the Holy Spirit, but to be honest, it wasn't until I was discipled that I really started a relationship with Him. Prior to me getting discipled, I always set the Holy Spirit aside because I thought that the Father and the Son were more important, <laughs> that, you know, they were already enough, so I didn't need to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And to be honest, I was on the losing end of that because... As I got to know who the Holy Spirit is, what His ministry to the, every believer is, I realized that the reason why I struggled so much with my day-to-day -day Christian life was because I was doing it apart from Him. I was doing it on my own. And the truth of the matter is, it is impossible to live the Christian life apart from the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, let me tell you, it is impossible to live the Christian life apart from the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit. We need Him desperately. So my question to you is, do you know Him? Are you close? You could be, and I tell you, you should be. We should be close to Him. As we continue our series entitled Trustworthy, we're going through the book study of Isaiah. We will actually go back to chapter 11, which we tackled a couple of weeks back during our Salt and Light series. But today, instead of just focusing on the Messiah, we will learn about the Holy Spirit who empowered Him to do His ministry. And my prayer is that from today on, that we would be empowered by the Holy Spirit as well in everything that we do. I'd like to request the people here to rise as we read the Word of God. Let's give reverence to it. Let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 2. I'll be reading from the ESV version. It says here, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. That is the word of the Lord for us today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your amazing love for each and every one of us. And thank you that it is your desire to have a relationship with us, to be with us, to never leave us alone. And we thank you 
that you have sent Jesus Christ to save us. And we thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit so that we could enjoy your presence every day, anytime, wherever we are. Holy Spirit, we pray that you be our teacher today. Open our minds, open our hearts, open our eyes to see you and allow us to surrender to you, to be led by you so that we could glorify the Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may take your seats. I'm really excited to talk about the Holy Spirit. Uh, my relationship with Him has revolutionized my Christian life. But before we get to know Him more, let's just see what is happening in this specific chapter of Isaiah. You know, a lot of people tend to skip the book of Isaiah because they see it as a long and heavy read. It talks about the impending judgment or the doom that the nation of Israel was about to face. So it is very encouraging. It's not something that you would want to read in the morning, right? So a lot of people skip it, but it's really a wonderful um, picture as well of God's love for each and every one of us. Why were the Israelites going to be judged? If we look at the earlier part of the Old Testament, we would see that God chose the nation of Israel to be His people. Why did He choose Israel? Just because. Out of His divine wisdom. And as He chose Israel to be His nation, the Lord made Himself known to them. His love, His power. He set them free from slavery. He reached out to them. He saved them. He brought them into a land that He promised where He will shower them with abundance, with blessings. But in spite of everything that the Lord has done for them, the stubborn behavior of the Israelites kept them going back to worshiping other gods, to putting their trust in people, in armies. And you know, that was happening even though God proved Himself to them time and time again. Does that, you know, every time things got rough. Instead of running to Him and asking for His help, they would usually run to people and other stuff. Does that sound familiar? I could imagine the things that are going through our mind. Oh Lord, I trust in You. I trust in Your plans, but I have a backup plan of my own just in case. Or Lord, I trust Your provision. I believe in You, but this illegal money in front of me under the table is just so tempting and, you know, I... I don't think it would hurt to get it. Or probably, Lord, I trust in your timing, but the shortcut is here. The easy way is here. No, the things that happen in our mind, we can easily become like the Israelites, whether it's in the area of our finances, in our relationships, or you know, going in line when it comes to the vaccine, <laughs> cutting corners. I've had my vaccine, by the way. Uh, I did not cut any lines. Um, so going ahead of God intervening with His plans will never really go well for us. And, you know, it will result, instead of us moving forward, it will result to even more setbacks. And that was what the people of Israel were going to learn because they kept going against the instructions that God gave them. Now, in Isaiah chapter 10, God says that the high and mighty Israel who thought they, their wisdom was better than God and even the armies that were going against them they were all going to be cut off like trees. It was going to be a barren forest. So again, it doesn't sound really encouraging, right? But every time the Lord mentioned something about judgment, He would always give them a glimmer of hope. That's what we see in chapter 11. It says in chapter 11 that out of the stump of Jesse or the line of Jesse, the lineage, the stump seemed dead, you know, after you cut off that tree, but in that stump, a shoot would grow or a branch would grow. And I don't know about you guys, but that's really exciting, especially for someone like me who just started taking care of plants a couple of months ago. You know, I actually take care of plants. Uh, a lot of them are okay, but I almost killed one. Uh, it started out so nice with leaves of three colors, and then all of a sudden, leaf after leaf started to, you know, just drop. And right now, it looks so bald. Uh, just the stem is there. But, you know, I was trying to save it. And just a couple of days ago, I was really ecstatic because, you know, the stem, it still looked uh, 
ugly to say the least. But you know, I saw, I saw small leaves sprouting and you know, it was really exciting because it was a sign of hope. It was a sign of life that that plant is still alive. And you know, the Israelites might have felt that they were cut off, but the Lord is saying, a shoot, a branch, life will come out of it. And that branch that was being referred to was Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the promised King. Now, when you look at Jesus, He is a man. So wait, Lord, are we supposed to put our trust in man? Isn't that the problem that we had? That's why you were going to give us judgment? What sets Jesus apart? Why could we put our complete confidence and trust in Him? In Isaiah 11 too, we see what sets Him apart. It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon Him. Jesus was man, yes, but He carried the very presence of God. The Holy Spirit filled Him with divine wisdom. The Holy Spirit filled him with unlimited power that was necessary for Jesus to fulfill the task that was set before him to save all of mankind by conquering sin and death. Now, when Isaiah mentioned this prophecy in the Old Testament, they weren't really familiar with the person of the Holy Spirit yet. They only knew about the Spirit of the Lord. And when, they, when, when the Spirit of the Lord was mentioned, they saw it simply as divine enablement, an anointing for a specific person to succeed in a special task, especially leading people. That's what we see in the lives of Joshua, of Saul, of David. In Numbers 27, 18, it says here, So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man who is the Spirit, whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. This was the call for Joshua to lead the Israelites after Moses. The Spirit came upon him. 1 Samuel 10.10, 10, when they came to Gibeah, behold, a group of prophets met Saul, and the Spirit of God rushed upon him, and he prophesied among them. Israel cried out that they wanted the king, and when God finally assigned Saul, the Spirit came upon him. 1 Samuel 10.13, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. Joshua led the Israelites to, you know, the promised land. He conquered army after army at a very young age. He was to step up from being the apprentice of Moses to being a military leader. Saul and David were both simple shepherd boys. They didn't really have any experience when it came to leadership, just leader sheep because they took care of sheep. Uh, but, you know, they were asked to be kings of Israel. If you were in their position, if you would put yourselves in their sandals or in their, in their sandals or shoes, whatever, um, would you accept that assignment? Knowing that you are beyond it. Knowing that it is beyond you, I mean. It's too big. It's too overwhelming. It reminds me of the time when I started ministry and uh, the pastors would assign me specific projects where I had to lead a large number of people, some older than me, and the temptation to say no was always so strong. I would say, Lord, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be able to do that. But you know, as I looked at the opportunity, I knew that if I wanted to grow, and if I wanted to keep my job, I'm kidding, if I wanted to grow and if I wanted to obey Christ, I, God, I would say yes. So what I did was I would always find someone who would be willing to back me up. And it's usually the pastor that was giving the assignment to me. I would find someone I trusted and I would say, Pastor, if anything goes wrong, you'll help me naman, di ba? You know, I always found someone to lead with, to, have, to help me. And that assurance of having someone who is willing, who is able, boosts our confidence to do things. And that was how Joshua, Saul, and David felt. They were ordinary men, young men who were inequipped, unequipped to take on the roles that they were being asked to fill in. But because of the Spirit of the Lord, they said yes, knowing that they would not be alone in that task, knowing that with the Spirit of God, there was that promise of success. And you know, with the Holy Spirit on their side, they thrived in what they did, ordinary men doing extraordinary stuff. As they submitted to the Lord, and as they obeyed him, which was what he was asking from the Israelites, Joshua became a successful military leader. Saul, he went on and became the first king of Israel. 
he eventually went his own way with pride and selfishness, but you know, the Holy Spirit empowered him during the beginning of his kingship. And eventually, when the leadership was passed on to David, we know that he became a general of a mighty army and he became one of the greatest kings of Israel, empowered by the Lord, empowered by the Spirit, all to give glory to God. And, you know, just to tell you, I too succeeded in the tasks that were given to me, although I wanted to say no. Um, you see, I'm still here, so it looks like I succeeded. Uh, but I don't take any credit. I would not even give the credit to the people who were around me. The only reason why we succeeded was because of the presence of God, the Spirit of the Lord that empowered not only me, but also all of the people that I'm working with. And when we talk about success in the tasks that we have, success is not based just on our hard work or our effort. Success always comes when, with the Spirit of the Lord. We see that even in the life of Joseph. Remember Joseph? He was a slave. He was put into prison. But wherever he was, he thrived. He flourished. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And I pray that whatever it is that we are going through, that we would always go to that truth, that the Lord has blessed us with His presence through the Holy Spirit, and we would not ignore Him the way I did in the beginning of my Christian life. You know, and I don't know what task God wants you to do right now, what He has set before you. It's probably not as being king, uh, but you know, maybe God is asking you to start something like writing a book or writing a song. Maybe God is asking you to apply for a job, apply for that promotion at work. Maybe God is asking you to step out of your comfort zone and reach out to your friends. Preach the gospel to them, share Jesus to them, or simply pray for your relative. It might seem overwhelming, it might seem impossible, but let me tell you, when God gives us tasks, He always gives us something that is beyond us, that we would not be able to do on our own. Because if we would be able to do it, why would we need Him? He gives us something bigger than ourselves to teach us to depend on Him, to rely on Him. It is an invitation to know and to experience Him and how the Holy Spirit can work in our lives. The Holy Spirit makes God's presence, His wisdom and power available for the victory of every believer. Again, for your victory, for your victory, the Lord makes the Holy Spirit available for us. Now, the Holy Spirit's ministry was different during the Old Testament and the New Testament. When Jesus came, he, ush, he made the ministry of the Holy Spirit clearer and more permanent. Because back in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would only be able to be with one person at a time. And He would only be with that person for a temporary period as, as He needed when the task was un finished yet. But once the task was finished, he was ready to move to another person, pretty much like what happened to Saul and David. Saul had the spirit, but when the kingship was transferred to David, the Holy Spirit transferred to him. And we see all sorts of empowerment. We know that it was the Holy Spirit that gave uh, Solomon wisdom, that gave Samson power, that gave Gideon boldness, and that is available for us as well. Now, when Jesus came, he promised that the same spirit in him wouldn't just be beside us believers, but would be in us. He would dwell in us, not just for a time, but for forever. He would never leave us. He would never forsake us. That promise is made possible through the Holy Spirit. He assures us that the same way that the Holy Spirit moved in His life would be the same way that the Holy Spirit would move in our lives. Now, to understand better how the Holy Spirit will move in our lives, we will go to how the Holy Spirit uh, how, what the role of the Holy Spirit was in the life of Jesus Christ. First and foremost, the Holy Spirit filled Jesus with wisdom. Again, the Holy Spirit filled Jesus with wisdom. And this was acknowledged by the people around him, even yung mga kabarangay niya who saw him growing up. When, he, when they heard him preaching in Matthew 13, 54, they said, you know, coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get wisdom and these mighty works? They were all surprised. There was even a group after hearing Jesus preach said, you know, how can he know all of these things with so much mastery when he isn't learned? When he did not go through formal education, what kind of wisdom is this? They acknowledged that the wisdom of Jesus was like no other. And he taught the word with so much mastery, with so much clarity, with so much authority, depth of insight. They never heard the word presented this way. And, you know, even the people who knew him as the son of Mary and Joseph were really amazed. 
Why was he able to preach with such wisdom? It says in Isaiah 11 too, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He was filled with wisdom by the Holy Spirit. There are three kinds of wisdom. Wisdom of man, the wisdom of the world, and the wisdom of the Lord. The wisdom of man is usually our go-to. It's our own wisdom. We think we're so intelligent. Uh, It's a wisdom based on our experiences, a wisdom based on the knowledge that we have of the situation based on what we heard from other people or what we saw on the news. And this kind of wisdom, if we're being honest, is very limited. This is usually our default choice in decision-making, but last year proved that it is unreliable. In 2020, you know, when we were hit by an unprecedented pandemic, who could say that they have experienced that before? We, did, we were scrambling. We didn't know what to do because our wisdom is limited. The second type of wisdom is the wisdom of the world. What is widely accepted? The popular opinion. But I'm sure that you would agree with me that we couldn't really count on this because we know that we live in a broken world corrupted by sin. What what many people want isn't necessarily what is right. Doesn't mean that something is accepted. It doesn't make it right. I'm sure that a lot of people, you know, I've been seeing a lot of comments about politics, about democracy, and people voting a certain candidate. I'm not just talking about the current regime, but even before that. And people would always say, oh, we voted for the wrong person. Oh, we should have voted this and voted that. There's no agreement. We don't really know what is right based on just consensus or what is widely accepted. So we can't rely on the wisdom of the world as well. And we have the third kind of wisdom, the wisdom that is perfect, the wisdom that we need in every decision, but unfortunately, the wisdom that we set aside. This is our last uh, go-to, the last thing that we go to, but this should be the first. The wisdom of the Lord is perfect. It comes from the one who knows every single detail, not just in the present, but, you know, every single detail in eternity past and eternity future. When it comes to decision-making, when it comes to making plans, they say that knowledge is power. The more you know, the better the decision or the plan that you are going to make. Now, when we talk about knowledge, no one can top what the Holy Spirit knows. He knows everything. No one can top what God knows. It's written in Isaiah 55, 8 to 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. A lot of times, the wisdom of the Lord would only make sense for us in the hindsight. But you know, looking back, we will say, that was really the best decision to make, even if I disagreed at that moment. And I pray that we would choose that kind of wisdom by faith as well. And this is the wisdom that Jesus exhibited all throughout His ministry. And up to this day even, It was seen both in his words and in his actions, in the depth of the messages of his preaching, in the decisions he made even during tough times, in the the way he answered the accusations of the Pharisees against him who were trying to trap him, in the way he dealt with his disciples publicly and privately, whether they did a good job or kind of a not-so-good job, and the way that he dedicated his life to accomplish God's plans. Jesus showed immense wisdom. When you look back at everything that He said in the Bible in every situation, Jesus always knew what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Don't we all need that? (laughs) Jesus always knew what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. He had knowledge of every situation even without observing or asking around. He did not need to do any research because He knows everything even what is in the heart of men. That is perfect wisdom. He always made the right choices because in every decision that he had to make, he had foresight. That kind of wisdom, wisdom not just for the now, but wisdom for the future. He knew how each and every choice would turn out. That is why he would be able to make the best decision. He knew and understood God's word and he perfectly lived it out. Would you like to have that kind of wisdom? Every day, in everything that we go through, always making the right decisions, that would save us a lot of trouble. Do you need help with an important decision that you have to make right now? 
probably in the area of your career, your relationships, your finances. Lord, should I, yeah, should I apply for that job? Lord, should I shift in my career path? Lord, what am I to do with this sickness? Lord, um, is this person the one? You know, those kinds of wisdom is available from the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is to ask. All we have to do is to ask and to receive. And of course, read God's Word, by the way. <laughs> That's the primary way that He communicates His wisdom to us. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. He gives wisdom through His Word. If I may share, you know, when I started getting discipled, I always asked, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me direction. Lord, help me what to do with my career. But I never read the Bible. <laughs> So what would the Holy Spirit remind me of? <laughs> I didn't have much to remember. You know, I, I would say, oh Lord, uh, whoever calls first, then that would be the job that's for me. Oh Lord, whoever enters that door, maybe that's the person I would talk to. We don't leave it to chance. God gives us clear direction through His Word. And I have experienced this personally. You know, when I was asking God what to do with my career, as I read His Word, of course, it wasn't really deliberately written that, oh, you from the entertainment industry, you would transfer to the ministry. It's not like that. But if you don't understand what the Word of God is saying, maybe we're reading it with our own wisdom, with our own eyes. Then we ask, Holy Spirit, please give me wisdom to understand this and to see how I can apply it in my life. And I tell you that He will make it clear. So the, the, the Holy Spirit led me to, to join the ministry. And not just that, we needed wisdom when my father got sick of cancer. You know, we didn't know what to do. You know, have you ever experienced that? You're just sitting down, you're saying, Lord, bahala ka na, hindi ko alam ko gagawin ko. But you know, we can't just sit and lie around. Of course, by faith, as we receive wisdom, we do it as well, we obey. And the wonderful thing about this, remember that before Isaiah received, the, the people of Israel, before they received the word from Isaiah that they were going to be judged, they received wisdom first and they received even comfort saying that hope will come. And that was what we experienced actually before we found out that my dad had cancer. The Lord already spoke to us in dreams through the Holy Spirit. The, uh, my mom had a dream that we were riding in a car and, you know, we were really going down a, a dangerous path like we were going to die. But the driver said, you know, this is going to be quick. Just hang on. I will be the one to take care of you. So, you know, it was foresight saying that, you know, something will happen. Then we found out that my dad was sick. But then we remembered the word of the Lord that came before even the situation happened. And you know, that brought so much peace. That is the wisdom that the Holy Spirit can give each and every one of us. Another instance was when my brother battled cancer. Again, we didn't know what to do. And the word of the Lord was that everything was going to be okay. And we obeyed him. And you know, my brother lost that battle to cancer. But we received peace because we knew that we obeyed the word of the Lord and we knew, we know right now that things are really better because he's not sick in heaven anymore. When we obey the wisdom of the Lord, there is so much peace. And I pray that today we will seek that wisdom. We will no longer rely on what other people say or what we think is best. Let's ask for that wisdom because that is available for each and every one of us. Imagine the wisdom that was used to create the whole universe, put the stars in place, all the computations that needed to be made, the wisdom that created the best technology, which I would say is our bodies, how everything is intertwined, how it flows together, how it works. That is the wisdom that is available for us. Do you want that wisdom? We can ask for it and we can receive it today. And you know, as the Holy Spirit filled Jesus with wisdom. The Holy Spirit filled Jesus with power as well. In Isaiah 11 too, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of counsel and might. Along with his perfect wisdom, Jesus also had extraordinary might and power. What does this mean? Whatever he wanted to do, whatever he set his mind to, nothing was impossible for him. He wasn't limited by anything. Nothing is impossible. He could do anything that he wants. We see that in many, many parts of the scripture, Mark 1, 27. And they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Jesus was above everything in the spiritual realm, even the spirits. I remember that story, the demoniac in the Bible who was possessed by thousands of evil spirits and people were trying to cast it out of him, were trying to get rid of him, but to no avail because they did not have the power to do that. And 
they gave up on him. Even the man gave up on himself. But when Jesus, you know, set foot in their city, the man ran and fell to Jesus' knees, and even the spirits acknowledged that he was all-powerful, saying, please don't send us to where we came from. You know, that's how powerful he is, and Jesus was able to cast them out. He was so powerful. Matthew 8, 27, and the men marveled, saying, what sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Even nature obeys him. This happened when they were stuck in a small boat and then suddenly big waves and strong winds appeared and they did not know what to do. They were panicking, but Jesus was just chill. And you know, all he said was just, be still. And all of a sudden, the storm disappeared. That's how powerful he is. And you know, on top of that, he raised people from the dead. His, his ministry was really filled with miracle signs and wonders, all possible because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. He was able to do countless miracles. He was able to make the blind see. He was able to make the lame walk. He was able to cleanse the lepers. He was able to multiply the fish and the bread. He was able to walk on water. He was able to raise people from the dead. And on top of that, the Holy Spirit, is also the power that was in him was also the one responsible for raising him from the dead. Imagine. And when we talk about this, who among you here want to witness miracles and experience miracles? I'm sure that we all want to do that. But you know the promise of Jesus? We would not only witness them, we would be able to perform them as He gives us the same Spirit that lived in Him. You know, a while ago, Pastor Carlo was praying for healing. Do you know that you can also pray for the healing of other people? You can lay hands because the same Spirit that was in Jesus Christ, the same Spirit that is in Pastor Carlo, in me, is the same Spirit in you as well. Healing is available. John 14, 12, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do this, the works that I do and greater works than these he will do because I am going to the Father. It's hard to imagine us doing greater works than Jesus. How can we top that? When we talk about greater works, they're not talking about the acts that we will do, but the number of works that we will do. Because now, in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit in the New Testament, He will not only reside in one person, but He will reside in every person that will believe in Him. The same way that He gave wisdom to Jesus, the same way that He gave power to Jesus would be the same way that we can experience it every single day. This is what Jesus promised the disciples before He ascended. In Acts 1.8, He said, but you will receive power. Can you say that? Power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And that happened. As the disciples received the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, we see them doing the same things. They probably never imagined it, but you know, a guy falling from you know, the window, dying, they were able to raise him up from the dead. They were able to cast out demons. They were able to heal the sick with their shadow as well. It was surprising, but it wasn't because of them. It was because of the work of the Holy Spirit in them. The promise is not just for the disciples during back that time, but for everyone who believes. And who among you here believe in Jesus Christ? Who among you here believe in the Holy Spirit? The same wisdom, the same power is available to us. We will receive the power to live like Jesus did, not just when it comes to doing miracles, but also living a Christ-like life. The greatest miracle probably would be someone who has shortage in patience, extending patience. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? That is something that is so hard, and if we get to extend our patience that way, man, that is a miracle. And God gives us that power through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us fruit. It's written in uh, Galatians 5, to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. He, he enables us to live a Christ-like life every day. And aside from that, He gives us special gifts, talent, skills to be able to display the power of Jesus, not for our glory, but for His glory. It's written in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 11, for to one is given through the Spirit wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, various kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each individually as He wills. These are things that we cannot produce on our own. These are things that we cannot claim the glory for. These are things that will naturally flow through us. 
as the Holy Spirit lives in us, as we surrender to Him. Jesus knew this, that we would not be able to live the Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. That is why He told His disciples to wait. Wait until I send you the Holy Spirit. And that is when we come to Pentecost Sunday. That is when it all happened. The promise of the Spirit, it poured out on the people. In Acts 2, 1 to 4, it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Can you imagine before the Spirit of God would only reside in a temple, in the Holy of Holies, but now the Spirit of God fell on people and indwelled us. We are now considered the temple of the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful privilege. What a wonderful picture that is. Let us remember why He was given to us. The Holy Spirit makes God's presence, wisdom, and power available for the victory of every believer. And our victory is not for our own glory. Our victory is made available to us so that we can glorify Jesus. We can glorify the Father. We can glorify God. Now again, I want to ask you, do you want to receive that wisdom and power available for our lives every single day? The starting point of that is receiving Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. He was the one who opened the door for us to receive the Holy Spirit. And you know, my prayer is that we really cherish that relationship. And I would like to pray for some people right now. Probably you're saying, oh Bodhi, I want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit as well. Let me tell you, it starts really with receiving Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. It starts with us receiving forgiveness, receiving cleansing, receiving righteousness that we cannot ever produce by ourselves. And after we have received that, that's when, you know, we can ask the Holy Spirit to come in and surrender to Him. So for those people, you have Jesus in your lives, praise God. You know the Holy Spirit, praise God. But I encourage you, continue to surrender to Him. Continue to ask, how often do we involve Him in our decisions? Even in the little, in the big, involve Him always and His wisdom will always be made available. And for the people here who want to experience the Holy Spirit, who want to receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, here's what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit resides in a temple, in a vessel that is holy. We cannot attain that holiness. That is why God sent Jesus Christ to pay for our sins, to forgive us, to cleanse us. How are we going to receive that cleansing, that holiness, that salvation? by opening our hearts to Jesus and by putting our complete trust in His finished work on the cross. If you want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you happen to be here, I invite you to follow me in this prayer. Say it with your lips, say it out loud, and say it with your whole heart. If you're in your home, do the same thing as well. My request is that you talk directly to Jesus Christ. Follow after me, say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for dying for a sinner like me for loving me and I ask for forgiveness for trying it out on my own today I invite you to be the Lord and Savior of my life I believe that you died and you rose again and today I receive you in my heart I receive your forgiveness and I receive the eternal life that only you can give help me to follow and to obey you every day of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we would like to congratulate you. We will share with you later how, what's the next step that you can take, how you can journey with us. But today, as we have all said that we would want the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be inviting Him to fill us. We will be inviting Him to take over. We will surrender to Him. I'd like to request the people here right now to stand up even if you're in your home, if you're in your room, stand up. We will open up our hearts and we will sing this song of worship, inviting the Holy Spirit into our hearts. Let's worship God right now. Fill us up, pour us out, pour a that is far from you fill us up pour us out to be your hands and feet oh lord fill us up pour us out for a broken world that is far 
Close. Let's keep this time continuously set apart for the Lord. And even in our homes, the Lord wants to remind you it's already been purchased. It's already been paid for, this relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus who sent the Holy Spirit. You don't need to order it. <laughs> you don't need to have it delivered. He's the one sending the Holy, His Spirit. He paid the price on the cross to destroy anything that might keep you from receiving it from Him. So right now, we just surrender. Lord, just here we are. Even those of you who just received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, it's already been paid for. Lord, we receive it right now. However you want to Surrender yourself. You can kneel. You can raise your hand. Bow down and close your eyes. Lord, iyong iyon na to. Buhay na to. Lord, we give it to you. Lord, our, our work, we give it to you. Our dreams and our ambitions, we give it to you. In fact, I feel the Lord saying right now, I will reverse. I'm going to do a mighty reversal in your story, in your life. Have you been traumatized as a child? I'm going to give healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive healing right now. Have you been, been hindered because you felt unconfident because all your life you've experienced rejection after rejection after rejection and now you have a fear of failure? Well, the perfect love of God washes away all that fear in the name of Jesus. Anything that is hindering from you now from living the, the life that God has designed for you, be gone now in the name of Jesus. Whatever, tra whatever trauma, whatever abuse you felt, whatever even demons have entered your life through, through some kind of influence or mindset, we say in the name of Jesus, be bound and be cast out now in Jesus' mighty name. No more, no more will these things hinder you. And receive right now the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Overflow, overflow. I invite everybody to just raise your hands. Kneel if you want to kneel. Bow down if you want to bow down. Lord, just, just take it. Here I am, a vessel. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Whatever I have, Lord, use it for your glory. Use it for your kingdom. Lord, the healing you have in our families, when you've restored our families. Lord, you've restored the, the, the broken marriages we have. Impossible na, Lord. Iniwan na ako, Lord. Lord, when you return, restore broken families and marriages. Lord, let it be for your glory. Let it be for your glory. Lord, the provision you have, the impossible provision you have. Walang wala na kami, Lord. We have nothing in our accounts. We have nothing in our resumes. Lord, nothing right now. No opportunities. Once you brought us to the well, Lord, and show us that it is overflowing with opportunities for you, Lord, bless that workplace you place us in. Bless that workplace. In fact, let me do this with everyone. Would you... Put your hands down and look at me, even in your all over, wherever you're watching. Here's, here's this wonderful picture of a guarantee. When Jesus talked to his disciples, and you all know this in Matthew 28, I know this is classic for you. But he said, all authority. Can you all say all authority? Everything under heaven and earth has been given to the Lord Jesus. And he said, do you want me, that authority, do you want that presence and power to be with you every day of your life till the end of the age? What did he say there? 
He said, therefore, everybody say, therefore, just so you know, make disciples. Make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Teaching them everything I've done. I told, chose to cho teach you or taught you. And I will be with you till the end of the age. Not at the end of the age. I will be with you today, every second, until the end of the age. If that's any reason to raise our hands, I don't know what reason there is. Lord, yes. Yes. We receive that. Woo! Go ahead. Go ahead. Woo! Even in your homes, go ahead. Woo! Lord, we receive it. All authority. All authority. Over heaven and earth. Over our workplaces. Over our finances. Over our families. Over this heart. Over this life. All authority is given to you, Lord. And you are with me. By your Spirit. We will go to that workplace. We will, we will disciple bosses and work people, our colleagues. Go ahead. Raise your hands. Lord, everything. The job opportunity we have, the, the, the provision you're going to give us, the house and lot you're going to give us so that that subdivision will be discipled by you, Lord. We will walk by your Spirit. We will make disciples, Lord. Signs and wonders will happen. Medical healing. Lord, right now, even right now, receive medical healing. For those of you who are sick, raise that hand high. You have a cold, you have cancer, you have lupus, you have anything, spinal disorder, mental disorder, receive healing right now in the name of Jesus so that people who need healing will know, and will know the power of the Lord in us, Lord, through us, Lord. And all of us here and all of us in our homes, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. Wow, wow. Why don't we give the Lord a hand for that? Oh, thank you. Peace, peace, completeness, integrity. And would you show the whole world that? Would you show the whole world that as we're sent out today? Okay? God bless you all. God bless you all.